What is cracking, y'all? I'm gonna do a little camping gear loadout video today. We've got uh, some timestamps down at the bottom. So first we're gonna talk about the kitchen. Then we're gonna talk about our sleeping setup. Then we're gonna just sort of talk about like general camping gear. That's sort of how I break them down into categories. So let's jump into it. So again, first, we're gonna talk about the kitchen. Um, and the most essential part of the kitchen is the stove. A little Coleman Triton stove, uh, two burner, obviously. Pretty generic camping stove, but it works out pretty well. Um, we tend to uh, use the one pound propane tanks. Uh, I do wanna get um, a five pound reusable tank because uh, I think it's obviously less wasteful and two it's gonna last us a lot longer so we don't have to keep buying the one pound tanks here we've got a little five liter bucket little foldable five liter bucket so we use the bucket as our sink and then we've got a uh, seven gallon uh, reliance water jug now um, i've read a lot of reviews about people having uh, issues with uh, the spigot becoming leaky um, so far for us it's been fine um, I mean we've been using it for maybe about a year so that's our sink setup we got going on here next we've got our uh, Yeti loadout go box now I did do a video on this if you want to check it out I'll, I'll link it right here show you what we have in here we got some oils some cooking oils got a bunch of seasonings that we need to refill. I've got a little uh, flint, got a little bottle opener, and we've got this uh, can opener, <laughs> really lightweight can opener. I've got our trusty spatula, I've got a couple of pot handles, I've got an MSR knife, whole heck of a lot of utensils. One thing that I really enjoy having, oh, it's not even in here, but we've got some pocket bellows, Next up, we've got all of our coffee utensils. Um, these are just like generic GSI mugs. So we've got two of those, one for me, one for Kim, obviously. A uh, really nice uh, Snow Peak French press. I don't typically use this as a French press. I'll use the base as a catcher for the coffee for our uh, pour over situation. So I use a Kalita 185 with the Kalita 185 filters that goes on top of there and then I do our pour over works out pretty well I use this um, little GSI uh, kettle for our pour overs as well and in here we have some extra cups kitchen ger generic kitchen scale that I use for the uh, for our coffee pour overs it's always good to be pr precise with your coffee because if you're not it's not gonna come out good the wolf and grizzly uh, camp thing i don't know what they call it it's like a little uh, foldable fire grate it's pretty nice i haven't really been able to use it um we sort of used it i think once before um fires were banned in oregon um, but i'm really looking forward to using this here in the winter to do some more uh campfire cooking i've got one of my favorite pieces of gear uh a it's a firebox stove this is also uh another wood burning alternative so it's a small box um, that you can uh, sort of build fires in many different ways inside but it's a very efficient stove for burning wood and cooking so um, if you want to check out firebox uh, youtube channel you should definitely do that fire uh, steve with firebox stove is he's great he does a lot of really cool fishing trips and backpacking trips in utah and uses the firebox for all of his campfire cooking Next, we've just got our kind of generic pots and pans. I've got a little uh, MSR pot. I've got a little circular cutting board from Firebox Stove as well. I love these little GSI pans. This one is probably, at this point, maybe three years old. Uh, still still cooking just as well as it was when I first bought it. So uh, we've got some just sort of deep aluminum plates. Um, and then I've just got another... GSI pan, a newer one that I haven't used on the fire on the fire top yet, and then I've also got a square pan as well. And then um, up in this top pouch here, uh, we've got a bunch of miscellaneous things like some soap, 
sponges. Uh, we've got a water filter in here. Um, the Yeti Go box comes with this divider uh, that we've just used as a cutting board and it just fits right in the top of this pouch. And then everything fits right back in there very nicely. It's a pretty great little system for us. Uh, fits everything we need and it keeps it super well organized. I can't tell you how frustrated I was um, trying to use a bin that uh, didn't have pouches and other things to sort of keep everything organized. Um, this makes our kitchen and cooking more organized, easier to clean up. Uh, and you can obviously achieve this in a lot of different ways than using this, but um, I really liked the system, so I bought it. So next up, we've got the uh, Yeti 105 cooler. This is also a somewhat recent purchase. We were using um, an old, well, I guess a new Coleman uh, previously, and it was a fine cooler, but um, we found that if we went on trips that were any longer than two days, uh, the, the ice really, really started to melt. So we wanted something that we didn't have to worry about our food going bad. So um, we ended up getting this and so far it's been really great. Uh, we've had a lot of, we've been able to keep um, a lot of uh, stuff in there, obviously, even with room to spare, which I think is kind of a big deal because there's nothing more I hate than having like a really crammed cooler where you have to push everything out of the way. And um, the divider here in the middle is just a generic one I bought off of Amazon. Um, the Yeti brand one was like, $70. So uh, no need to spend $70 on a square piece of plastic when you can get one for $15. Up next is the sleeping gear. So this is a brand new purchase for us. This is the um, Xped long wide duo mat. It's a, I believe a foam cell uh, air mattress hybrid. It's got an R value of nine, which means it's very, very warm. We used it for the first time and our trip out to Deschutes National Forest. Uh, click the link here if you wanna check that out. And if you're enjoying the video so far, hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe. Let me know in the comments uh, if you have any of this gear. Um, if you got any gear suggestions for me, would love to know, so let's chat. But uh, the Xped Duo Mat, whatever it's called, something like that. Let's see, Mega Mat Duo. Really, really uh, fantastic purchase for us. You know, they say you spend a third of your life sleeping. You gotta invest in that, especially when you're camping. Uh, sleeping well while you're camping is super important. This thing is pretty huge as far as like volume goes. It's almost impossible to really pack it down anymore. Maybe if we got some sort of compression straps, we could we could get it to go down a bit more, but I'd be a little worried about damaging it. So that's maybe the only drawback of this thing is it's sort of large packed down. But, oh man, this thing is so comfortable. Um, we're gonna test out sleeping on this thing in the back of the Prius. So we're gonna be going out this weekend. So you'll definitely see a trip video from that and you'll see our, uh, our review of how we uh, how we sleep in the back of the Prius. Here we've got a little thermorest pillow, a little folding thermorest pillow, Kelty 30 degree sleeping bag. I sort of zip this thing out into a blanket when I sleep. I don't really like being constricted in a sleeping bag. I've got really wide shoulders, so sometimes I'll put a blanket down underneath me just to uh, keep the warmth in. So to um, house everything for our sleeping gear, I have got this uh, 80 liter waterproof duffel. And the reason I changed to a duffel instead of a tote was one, to make it a little bit easier to fit into our rooftop box that we have now. And second off, I, I got a waterproof one because they say the water, the rooftop boxes aren't always uh, watertight. You know, just in case we have any leakage or anything from the, the seal, I wanted to make sure that our sleeping stuff was definitely not gonna get wet. So that's what I'm using to carry everything. Uh, this is our Big Agnes uh, Copper Spur UL3. It's also our backpacking tent. Um, there are the poles. Apparently I have some extra tent poles for our other tent. Not sure why those are in here. Got a nice little uh, Rumple mini nano puff blanket. This was a birthday present from Kim this year. So this is uh, typically what I'll use underneath my um, shoulders and head. Keeps me very warm. Cooper's bed. So um, if you camp with dogs, 
Uh, you know, I, Cooper runs pretty hot, but, uh, you know, obviously if it's 30 degrees outside, he needs to be warm. So, um, he has a little rough wear bed here. This is a uh, Cooper sleeping bag. We put it in a stuff sack. This is also rough wear. The, you know, the thing is, it's like a little circle essentially where the zipper sort of goes all the way around. He pretty much only sleeps in it when it's actually truly cold. Otherwise, we don't bring this with us because he'll just sleep on uh, the air mattress with us and he's usually pretty warm if it's anywhere above 45 or 50 degrees. We've got our little Eno hammocks. I've, uh, this Eno hammock has taken me across the US and back again. So I have taken this thing all the way from Massachusetts down to uh, back to Louisiana, over across to the West Coast. So, and I've camped in it pretty much everywhere. So this little Eno hammock is probably my oldest piece of gear. Uh, you know, I, when I first started camping, when I lived in Louisiana, um, I didn't do a ton of camping in Louisiana because uh, it's miserable. <laughs> Um, but when we did do camping, I slept in a hammock. And the great thing about that is it was always the, the one downfall of sleeping in Louisiana is it's always hot, but then you can sleep in a hammock and you don't have to worry about um, getting the butt chills. So I love having a hammock for little day chills, cat naps. We've got our straps. I've also got one for Kim here. Uh, this is the single nest and then this is the double nest. And uh, how we hook them up together is we've got these little extender poles. So um, these are sort of just like little tent poles. They'll fold out um, and then basically link between the two hammocks uh, to keep them separated. And then uh, Kim and I can, you know, take a little hammock nap together where, wherever we're camping. So that's pretty cool. A little Sea to Summit uh, sleeping bag liner. We've got some Sea to Summit air pillows. Those are typically what we use for backpacking. And then we've got uh, Ken's sleeping bag here. This is uh, a Kelty 20 degree mummy bag. She likes it. This is what she uses for uh, car camping and for backpacking. Um, I have my uh, big sleeping bag that I showed you that I use for car camping, but I also have the same one of these for backpacking. All right, so now we're moving on to sort of just the uh, general camping gear. Uh, and I just I just sort of call this our uh, general camping tote because it's sort of a catch-all for things that don't fit in the kitchen, things that don't fit in our sleeping bag or sleeping stuff. So what do we have in here? We've got a nice little runner rough wear leash for Cooper. So this will hook up between two trees and there's a little carabiner and we'll hook up a leash or two uh, and he'll have some range to uh, run around if he has to stay on leash. We've got a little seven by nine tarp. Um, this, you're gonna be seeing this thing pretty soon in another video. Um, I'm experimenting with making a awning for the side of the car. So we're gonna use this as the awning. And I've got a pair of telescoping tarp poles here. It's uh, it's kind of an interesting build because uh, I'm, I'm not building anything. Uh, I just bought some suction cups. So these little suction cups will, um, snap on to the side of the um, rooftop box and we'll clip the tarp into there and the tarp poles hold up one side you tie it down so far i found it to be pretty solid i'm also experimenting with uh, mounting magnets on the box instead of using um instead of using these suction cups because uh if i do pull pretty hard they come off, but I have a suspicious feeling that it might be the same for the magnets. So we'll find out. We've got a little tiny hatchet here that I use for um, small work. We've got some wet wipes. We've got some bear spray. Haven't had to use this. We've got some nice little work gloves for processing firewood. We've got some little Eno lights. Some little, uh, we've got a little headlamp, trash picker upper. Pick up your trash, people. Uh, we've got this little uh, Benchmade knife, little bushcraft knife, super nice. Also for processing firewood and, you know, general safety. Got a little uh, silky saw that I use for processing smaller pieces of wood. Um, we've got our medical kit, which uh, we keep stocked, obviously. 
two more headlamps, extra batteries. Got some fun binoculars here. We got bug spray, another little lamp, cheap lamp that we all use to hang up on things. I've got this uh, folding Coleman shovel. Now, I got this for like 10 bucks because the trowel that we had really wasn't cutting it for uh, our dispersed camping. And you know, going to the bathroom, if you gotta sit there and dig a hole for 10 minutes, it, it just spells trouble sometimes. So, um, I bought a bigger shovel, but the uh, material is pretty cheap and I've been finding that the plastic, the little screw here, I've been finding that this piece here that screws onto the shovel head has been sort of losing some of its, um, I guess, grip and you have to continually tighten it down and then it just digs more and more into this plastic piece that um, sort of cinches it down onto the shovel and that makes it hard to dig. So uh, I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend the Coleman shovel to anybody. Um, we've got some bathing wipes. These things are great, honestly. We've got a little day pack for uh, hikes or whatever it might be. A little Sea to Summit head net. Um, Kim always gets eaten by mosquitoes, no matter where we go. They leave me alone almost everywhere we go. They don't touch me, but they're always, always after Kim. So she's got a head net when the bugs are out and about. Picardin, I believe Picardin is uh, only for your gear or something like that, I don't know. We've got another little day pack and we've got our camp towels, battery banks that we use to charge our phones. We've got some more bug spray and we've got some sunscreen. We've got some cards, some duct tape, a lamp, and two locks for uh, the Yeti cooler. Put these on the cooler um, and you lock them. It is a uh, certified bear safe container. Want to leave the cooler out of the car, we can do so with these. Typically we don't, but since we're gonna be sleeping in the car, we might be doing that this week. Uh, REI cooler backpack. Okay, so the really cool thing, ooh, really cool thing about this is um, we've got sort of this open top section just to put anything you want in the top. Um, it folds down, you've got a top zipper pocket as well. And then underneath, there's a little zipper compartment. You unzip that, it unvelcros, and you've got this cooler that can pop out. And you've just got this nice little cooler. It's pretty big too. I fit a 12 pack of beer in here. And it just slides right into the backpack. Now, um, you've probably seen those backpacks from like Hydro Flask and Yeti that are just a uh, straight up cooler. And I have thought about getting one of those, but they're very expensive and um, they don't allow you to um, really carry anything else, right? Um, it's basically just room for food and drinks. And that sort of stopped me from, from purchasing it. One, because the price, two, because like, I wanna carry more things than just like drinks or food. And this option from REI, I think the backpack was like 70 or $80 and it solves a really nice problem. So I got it and it's pretty cool. I've used it. We used it uh, on our last trip out to Deschutes. So if you haven't watched that video, click right here, uh, give it a watch. Please subscribe. Please like if you're enjoying the, the videos from the basement, my like very stream of consciousness gear videos. <laughs> are these leveling blocks. So these um, sort of go on the ground and you can uh, stack them sort of like large Legos uh, and then you can level your car out. So um, typically we sleep on a ground, we sleep in a ground tent, um, but Kim and I are experimenting with um, turning the back of the Prius into um, a sleeping area because we're planning on doing a long road trip across country uh, here in the next couple of weeks and 
uh, I want to, I want it away, obviously to be able to level the car if, um, we're not on level ground. So, um, these seemed like a good solution because the Prius can't really, I don't really want to drive the Prius up onto rocks and branches. Um, cause we don't have super solid tires. I've got this wonderful little REI chair. Let's see if we can get it open. Show you, show you the goods. I'm not going to set it up but you can see it's like this nice sort of wool material here flex light norwell sherpa fleece macro chair there you go all of our tables and chairs are actually rei brand as well we've got this sort of generic roll table from rei we have two of them and then here we've got this just also generic camp rei chair camp x chair over here we've got our telescope this was uh kim's birthday present this year it's a little small travel telescope we've got another small little folding table here in between table chair in between chair table in between chair table that's what i was looking for fiskers um i guess it's not little it's pretty big uh, but a Fisker's uh, splitting mall. Well, y'all, that's going to do it for the gear loadout video today. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please like, please subscribe, all that stuff. Would love to chat with you in the comments. And uh, hopefully this uh, maybe inspires you with a little bit of gear decisions of your own. It seems to be that a lot of people that are interested in Prius camping are watching our videos, which is cool. Um, though I would say that the Prius... I sort of use it as like uh, just fodder for thumbnails, <laughs> but in general, you know, we're just, we're just regular old campers out there in our tent. Occasionally we'll sleep in the car. Um, I think, you know, eventually the, the plans for this channel and just like our, the plans for um, our own traveling life is to have more of a self-sustaining vehicle. So either a van or um, more of a, like truck overlanding setup. So we'll get there eventually. Um, but for, as for now, um, this is all of our gear that we use for the Prius. And, um, so far it's, uh, worked out pretty well, you know, slowly over the years, I've been changing things and moving things around. Um, and I feel like we're at a pretty good spot. So, um, and, uh, next week, well, possibly sooner, uh, if you're watching this, uh, when it comes out, I'll have a new trip video um, with some pretty exciting stuff happening. So uh, be sure to look out for that coming in the next few days, maybe week. We'll see how quickly I can edit. Um, but yeah, again, thanks for watching. Hope you have a good one. Peace.